Hey AP students, in this video we're going to discuss how to write the LEQ or the long essay question. Let's begin with some of the basics. It is the final thing you do on the AP exam. It's 40 minutes long and it's 15% of your overall score. You're going to have a choice of three questions and you pick one of them to answer. Each of these questions will test the big three thinking skills that we've studied in class, comparison, causation, and continuity and change over time. You'll be asked to develop and support an argument based upon evidence. And the good news is you're going to have that choice of three prompts and you pick the one that you like the best. They'll be from the periods of 1490, um, 1491 to 1800, 1800, 1898, and 1898 to th 2001. All three prompts will be about similar themes, so pick the one that you feel like you're most comfortable with and then begin writing. An example outline of an LEQ, and you can see it right over here. Number one, an introduction that includes three sentences of contextualization and a thesis statement. Also, I think that a good essay will have three body paragraphs. A body paragraph should include a topic sentence, and um, it should also include SFI. That stands for Specific Factual Information. You can also think of them as key terms if you want, um, but I also think that you should include interpretive commentary. You know, so many times we can describe what evidence is. We can describe a key term and say what it is, but we have a harder time talking about how and why the evidence ties back to the argument and supports an argument. And so I always like to tell my students, don't talk about just simply what something is, but write about why something is significant. And so keep that in mind. I think that a good body paragraph will also include a clincher sentence. I always tell my students, begin your clincher sentence with the word therefore, comma, and then begin tying it back to whatever your main argument is in your thesis statement. And then finally, a conclusion. A conclusion is not very necessary, but I always tell my students, this is your opportunity to try and earn the thesis point again if you feel like you did not get it the first to go around in the introduction. So many times when we write our essays, we kind of learn our argument as we're writing the essay. And so a conclusion is an appropriate place to place your, your uh, thesis statement again. So you may want to think about trying it again if, uh, if necessary, if you have enough time for that. So it's crucial that you understand the six point LEQ rubric so that you can score as high as possible on this thing. Let's begin with studying the very first point of the LEQ. It is contextualization. Contextualization is described as uh, describing the broader historical context relevant to the prompt. So it's background information and it's best placed in the introduction but it can really be put anywhere in the essay. The easiest place to put it would be in the introduction. Um, contextualization should be the very first three sentences in your introduction. Um, it's the first half if your introduction, if you will. So think about the time period that occurred before the prompt. And we'll say of around 25 to 50 years into the past. And that's where you want to begin. So then you want to write three sentences with specific background information that lead your reader into the topic of the prompt itself. So you are setting the stage for the big show, which of course is your essay. So think of the opening crawl lines to all of the Star Wars films. They always provide a great example of what contextualization is supposed to look like. And the reason is they uh, provide background information. You kind of have the, the uh, enough to know why people are shooting red lasers at each other. And uh, notice that those opening lines don't give the plot away to the film but they do give you just enough information that you kind of know that why people are fighting and there's wars and what's going on in the background. Let me give you an example here. So if we're writing an essay on the Great Depression, this example on the top right might be a good one uh, that could get some credit here. So I always tell my students, why don't you start with some of these contextualization starters? Begin your essay with these phrases in the years leading up to the prompt, the topic of the prompt or coming out of the previous era. So let me give you an example here. In the years leading up to the Great Depression, that's the topic of the prompt right there, the Great Depression. But I want to give contextualization. So let's build up to the Great Depression. So in the years leading up to the Great Depression, the U.S. found itself in an extravagant decade of the 1920s. It was a time of laissez-faire economics. It was led by the business leadership. Speculation on the stock market was an all-time high. Banks made risky loans and people purchased too many products using credit. So what I did is I gave the background information that led us into the Great Depression and then the next thing that I would need to do in my introduction is, is lead it into the thesis statement. 
and then I would complete my introduction on all. Students, this is the easiest point to earn on the LEQ, and uh, so you want to get this one knocked out first. Of course, you can give contextualization anywhere, really, in the essay. The easiest part would be in the introduction, so just do that first. Thesis statements. Your thesis statement in general must respond to the prompt and be on topic. It has to have a historical defense, defensible claim or make an argument. I tell students, even if it's the absolute weakest argument ever, um, it could be accepted as a, uh, as a thesis statement. So at the very least, make some sort of a weak attempt at an argument, and you can still get credit that way as well. So your thesis also has to establish a line of reasoning, and it has to make sense and uh, be related to whatever the prompt is. So it needs to be one or more sentences located in one place, either in the introduction or in the conclusion, as we discussed earlier. I'd suggest definitely place it in your introduction. A thesis statement cannot restate or rephrase the prompt. Um, that never gets credit, and that's a common reason for why people don't earn the credit itself. But what you want to do is communicate to your reader that one single topic is more significant than two other topics. Now, you can do this vice versa. You can say that two topics are more, speci more significant than one, uh, but it is your special argument. And so um, you have been taught in my class that uh, there is a formula and it goes like this although x y because of a and b x is your counterpoint y is your main argument a and b would be your two main topics all in all let's look at an example although a lack of representation in parliament caused considerable agitation among the col among the colonists the violation of colonial rights and increase in taxation were far more significant causes of the American Revolution. You always want a counterpoint, um, and that would be one body paragraph. A and B, these are other body paragraphs as well. A being a standalone body paragraph, same thing can be said about B, all in all. So just to, to kind of keep some things in, in check, and, and as a reminder, if you write using causation, uh, you see an example right there. What is the greatest cause? You got maybe three topics of causes, which one is the greatest uh, area of causes? Same could be said about effects. What is usually more significant, the causes of an event or the effects? Usually it's the effects. And I could say the same thing about continuity and change over time. What's more important, the things that remained over a period of time or the things that changed over a period of time? Usually changes. Same thing could be said about the thinking skill comparison. What's more important, similarities of two topics or the differences? Usually the differences. But again, it's, um, it's your special essay, it's your argument. As long as you argue that uh, whatever point you're trying to make throughout your essay, you can get points for your thesis statement itself. Let's talk about evidence here for a moment here. Lots and lots of evidence. You have to earn the first evidence point to earn the second one to get two points for evidence. So you must provide specific historical examples relevant to the prompt to support your argument. Two or more specific historical examples are needed. So plural. In order to get the first point, you have to have at least two pieces of SFI in your essay, which to me the bar's kind of set pretty low. Um, I want you to include as many examples as you possibly can, but two or more will get the point all in all. So these are specific people, places, and events. To earn two points, the response must use specific historical evidence to support an argument in response to the prompt itself. So what you need to do is explain your terms and then connect it to your argument. These are where your clincher sentences will come into play in your three body paragraphs. End each body paragraph with a sentence that ties your evidence back to the argument itself. So use the word therefore to start your clincher sentence. Why is this important? Because this helps you get that second evidence point because you are tying it back to your thesis statement. And so that's why it's just so important. You don't want to miss out on that second evidence points all in all. So let's take a moment here and consider a few things. Here's an example of a body paragraph that I typed regarding the American Revolution. And I'm going to just ask you to pause the video and skim read this. But as you do skim read the paragraph itself, you should notice that in what I have highlighted in red would be the topic sentence. I have highlighted in red at the bottom the clincher sentence 
underlined would be all of the SFI, all of the examples that I'm using. And of course, as you skim read this paragraph, make sure that you're seeing how I'm showing the significance of these things, specifically with the Stamp Act. Take a moment and look at that. Notice that I didn't just describe the Stamp Act, but I showed its overall significance, why and how the evidence all mattered and led to it being a major cause of the American Revolution all in all. So pause the video, take a moment to skim read over an example of a body paragraph. But for our video, we're going to continue. Historical reasoning. You do get points for this. You get points for using comparison, causation, or continuity and change over time to answer the prompt. What's really great is that you pick which one you want to use and then you argue um, throughout your essay, consistently argue using that thinking skill stuff. So you can answer the prompt using any skill, but choose one and stick with it. I would spend two paragraphs on one half of the thinking skill and one paragraph on the other part of the thinking skill. For example, causation, um, call, you've got causation, continuity, and change over time in comparison. Let's, let's talk about um, changes in continuities for just a moment. So I would, you normally, if you get that thinking skill, if you use that thinking skill, uh, students would probably spend two body paragraphs talking about changes over time, but they would also need to talk about one body paragraph needs to talk about what stayed the same and what were the continuities. Now, again, it is your essay. You could talk about two body paragraphs of continuities and one of changes, but think about that with the other thinking skills that are out there as well. Um, that would be very important. So, for example, I would like, like, likely write once one more time, um, I would likely write two paragraphs on changes over time and one a paragraph of continuities if I use that thinking skill. You can earn this point even if your reasoning is uneven or imbalanced. And so, uh, you know, just kind of keep that in mind all in all. So it is very possible to have nothing but changes. And um, that's what it means by being imbalanced. Maybe you forgot about writing about continuities. But if you talk about uh, this was an area of change, this was an area of change, but this was the greatest area of changes in your essay, then that would also get credit as well. So I hope that makes some sense. So yet again, uh, you can see here in the yellow box the three thinking skills. Uh, maybe pause the video and consider these things. Um, you know, we talked about uh, cause, cause, causation earlier, and we talked about continuity and change over time just a moment ago. Um, but, you know, consider that as you want to go in and write and craft your essay all in all. Uh, use them and use them to your benefit. The final point that you can earn on, an, on the LEQ is the complexity point. And let me start off with this. This is a tough point to earn. It demonstrates a deeper understanding of the prompt. So you should include a counter argument throughout your essay. That is the purpose of the X in the, uh, in the thesis formula. The, the counterpoint in the thesis formula, although X, Y because of A and B. So I suggest writing one body paragraph that addresses the other side of the argument in your essay. For example, in an essay about the differences between two topics, I would be sure to spend at least one paragraph writing about how the two topics were similar. So don't stress too much about this particular point. They call it the unicorn point because it is an incredibly rare uh, and hard point to earn, a rare point, just like how rare it is to see a unicorn. So it's kind of jokingly referred to as the unicorn point. However, students that usually strive to earn the complexity point usually go on to write great essays. So as we round out uh, this, this overview of the uh, LEQ, uh, I want to encourage you to think about getting the gimme points. And what do I mean by the gimme points? The ones that are the easiest ones. The contextualization, a thesis statement, using two or more examples. You know, instantly if you do those three things, you have half credit. You got a three out of six. Um, but using the historical thinking skill, as we saw um, earlier, just simply going in and talking about uh, changes and continuities, that, that can get you a fourth point right there. So a three or a four on an LEQ, that's actually a solid score. That's not a bad score whatsoever. And so remember, as you, as you are writing your essay, don't show me just simply what something is, but why your evidence supports your main argument. And strive to get a complexity point. Uh, you can do that. And so um, it's very doable. 
to have a good solid score on an LEQ and not have to stress all that much and too much all in all. Okay everybody, I hope that this video was helpful. As always, please contact me if you have any questions and I'll be glad to help you out. Best of luck everybody and thanks for watching.